Are you negotiating real estate all wrong? Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you five steps to negotiating real estate so you can put together excellent deals where everybody wins. Hi, I'm Phil Pustiowski, real estate investor, mentor. You can learn more about me at freedommentor.com. Now, a lot of people in real estate think that the way you negotiate a great deal is that you put together such a lopsided transaction that you get all the upside and the other person just loses. Well, I've got news for you. That's a bad idea. Because, see, real estate's different than a lot of other transactions. You know, when you get a deal under contract, that's just the beginning. Then there's usually appraisals, inspections, and there's this whole period of time that's at least 30 days, sometimes longer. That's plenty of time for people to change their mind. That's why in real estate, you've got to put together win-win deals. But also what happens is there is so much in the way of communication that sometimes the deals never come to fruition because they were negotiated incorrectly. Well, in this video right here, right now, I'm going to share with you how to negotiate real estate correctly. All right, I'm going to talk about step number one. Step number one is going to be posture. Posture. What's posture? Posture is how you position yourself. How you position yourself. Now, if you come into the transaction like what I say, a dog in heat, where you <laughs> just absolutely have to have the deal, that's a problem. You know, it's kind of like if you were in high school and you were, you were looking for a date and you went up to a girl and you absolutely acted like you wanted to go out on a date with her. The problem is, is they kind of pull back a little bit, don't they, when they think you want them so bad. So what you have to do is you have to play the role of a reluctant buyer if you're buying the property or a reluctant seller if you're selling the property. The most powerful position in negotiating is the ability to walk away. You may want to write that down. The ability to walk away. That is posture. The ability to walk away, to play the role of reluctant buyer, reluctant seller. Okay, so that's step one. Have the right mindset. Your mindset is you don't have to have this deal. It's not totally necessary. You want that person coming to you. You want that person convincing you as to why you should do the deal. You know, as, a, as an investor coach, as a real estate mentor, what I see sometimes is some of the new people that join our program, what they'll do is they'll try to sell the seller on why they should work with them. That's not the way to do it. Instead, you want the seller trying to convince you as to why you should buy their property. Does that make sense? Okay, great. So that's step one. Step two is decision maker. Now this may go this may go against the grain a little bit. Because in real estate you have real estate agents, right? I am an agent. And they can sometimes be in the middle, correct? Well, what I'm going to propose to you is that you want to get directly to the decision maker. That means if you are selling the property, you want to have direct contact with the buyer. Now, that's a little bit unorthodox, isn't it? Because if there's agents involved, they may say, well, I'm not going to allow you to do that. Well, that's what we say in our transactions. I'll put it on the counter offer that I have direct access to the buyer because I want to talk directly to the decision maker. That's how you put together win-win deals. When you have agents involved, they have other sorts of agendas. They have other sorts of um, goals they're trying to meet in the deal. You want to meet the goals of the decision maker. And then on the other side, if you are buying real estate, what we teach is to go directly to the seller. Don't buy properties that are already listed, if you can all avoid that, because then you're not getting direct access to the decision maker. Okay, so you need to talk directly to the person who makes the final decision. Now, if there's a husband-spouse situation, if there is a sibling, as in the case of an inheritance with several heirs, that's important too. Then you have to talk to all of the decision makers with an S, right? Okay, so that's step two. Step one, posture. Step two, and the right decision maker. Step three, discovery. This is incredibly important when you're buying real estate. Now, when you're selling, it's a little simple. In either case, the key to discovery is understanding why. Why does the person want to sell their property? What is, what is driving them at selling? Is it because they want to move into a bigger home? Is it because they're going through a divorce? Is it because they've had some medical bills that they have to pay? Is it because they hate their town? Is it because the house has got a sinkhole underneath it and the whole house is about to cave in? You need to know why, correct? 
So that is so critical here at this step. Now what that also means in the discovery step, if you're looking to buy the property, is you really understand the person's situation. So that means like if they are going to move, when are they moving? And where are they moving to? And are they going to be buying a home when they move there? Or are they going to be renting? And who are the owners of the property? Husband and wife or just one person? How much do they owe on the property? And that's a key little element. If somebody isn't going to tell you how much they owe on the property when you're first talking to them, that's an indication that they may not be the right person to work with. And one of the pieces of discovery that's most important is motivation. When you're buying real estate, you want to work with motivated sellers, people that have to get rid of their home. And you know, only like three to five percent of all sellers out there are the motivated ones that we love to work with when we're buying real estate. So that's a key component of discovery. But discovery also is important when you're selling a property. Why is the person buying it? Are they an investor? Are they looking to buy it to move into? Is it because their wife loves the home and they hate it? So we like to have direct communication with the buyer too so we can discover why as well as all the rest of the details. Now that you have that information, step four is going to be options. You want to give the seller options, but the way you do that is you walk them through it. So if you're talking directly to a seller, you want to explain their options. Say, well, have you considered renting the property? And that's where they may say, well, I don't want to rent because I don't want to deal with toilets at 3 a.m. and this, that, and the other. At least you've covered that option. Well, have you thought about you know, listing it with a real estate agent? They may say, I hate real estate agents. Either way, you are throwing out options so that ultimately, step five is your presenting of the offer is really just talking about the best option that you discovered in step four. That's all it really is. So that way you're presenting the best opportunity whereby each person wins. And the other beautiful thing about this approach is that it allows the person to feel like they were a part of the decision of the offer. And in some cases what we'll do, if there are multiple options, we'll make multiple offers. Like in the example of somebody who owns their home free and clear, we may say, okay, we'll pay you your full asking price, but what we're going to ask you to do is take that amount of money over time. We'll make individual uh, monthly payments to you. We call that owner financing. Or maybe what we'll do is say, okay, if you don't want your full asking price, we can pay you this amount all cash today. So sometimes it's not one offer, it's offers. But that's done as a result of, of first of all, having the right posture talking to the decision makers, understanding their situation, going through their options so that you know which offer or offers to make. And the same is true if you're selling the property. You need to know their options. What if they love four other homes? I had a friend of mine that they dealt with that um, just about a week ago. They were selling their personal home and the person made an offer on their home and four other homes at the same time. And then what they did is they tied them all up and they bought one of the four. And it was devastating to my friend because what ended up happening was they started to make plans like they were going to sell their home and all of a sudden it, it, it fell through. So you have to know what these people's options are. What if your home is the only home that they could, be, uh, that they could fall in love with in their entire area? That helps as well because it can help with your counter offering. So these are the five steps to negotiating real estate most successfully. When you apply these correctly, you put together win-win deals that close because the statistics show that only 40% of all real estate contracts ever make it to closing. Well, with this approach, nearly 100% make it to the closing table. And that's because you've worked out a win-win deal where all parties are gonna benefit, not a lopsided transaction where you get a great deal and the other person loses. That's not the way to do real estate. The way to do it is to come up with a creative solution where all parties win. All right, well, I'm Phil Pustiowski with FreedomMentor.com. I hope you enjoyed this video. we got a whole lot more on our YouTube channel, so check that out. And uh, happy investing. Those are the steps to negotiating real estate successfully. Have a great day.